Welcome back. Today we'll be talking about the Workhouse HD11 90 degree folding flashlight. I need to start by saying thank you to Workhouse for providing this light for review and what an interesting flashlight it is. Not only does it have a rotating head, but it also offers three different light sources. A primary luminous SFT40 LED spotlight, six Bridge Lux CSP1919 LEDs as um, floodlights, and three CSP1313 red LEDs. Plus, the UI of the HD11 will allow you to run either the SFT40 at around 46 to 5200 Kelvin, the CSP1919 is at around 4800 Kelvin, or both of them, or the red CSP 1313s. Uh, beyond these specs, the rest of the headline reads a maximum of 1800 lumens of output with a beam distance of 253 meters and a runtime on the one lumen moonlight mode of up to 420 hours. Not only that, it's rather tough with an IPA 68 ingress protection against dust and water. And I'll end up throwing the uh, ANSI sheet up right now as it has, it's quite large because of all the different output options you get with all these different emitter options. Um, so you may need to pause it here just to take it all in. This is on the larger side of EDC flashlights as it is powered by a 3000 milliamp hour 18650 cell, though it does feature an easily accessible USB-C charge port, both of which the battery and the charging cable are included with the flashlight along with the lanyard manual and some replacement O-rings. All of that is currently available for $44.96 on Amazon Prime, and as always, I'll be sure to include a link in the description for purchase. Though it is only one way, the HD11 does have a strong enough clip to allow you to use it as a headlamp, but with its weight, it could definitely be uh, something you only do in a dire situation, kind of uh, unwieldy, and you'll have to tighten your hat quite a bit. Um, although with the pocket clip, it also has a strong magnetic tail cap, allowing it for even more placement and usage options. This light also features quite a bit of safety features such as an advanced temperature regulation, reverse polarity protection, low voltage warning, and more. Uh, I'm also quite a big fan of this anti-slip textured coating. Uh, it's like a grippy little rubberized, almost like Plasti Dip coating on it. But it definitely feels quite a bit more solid than Plasti Dip, like it's not just going to rub off. I'm phrasing. Um, the HD11 weighs in at 98 grams with battery, and it comes in at 5.2 inches tall and 0.98 inches wide at its widest point. Along with its IP68 ingress protection, it has a one meter impact rating. Uh, this light is operated uh, via its illuminated side switch. Uh, the switch will be green as long as the battery capacity is above 70%, solid red between 30 and 70%, and a flashing red once it's under 30%. I'll also say the UI feels very intuitive with some minor quirks due to its rotating head. Um, from off, if you hold the side switch, it will go into moonlight, and this is the only way you can get in moonlight mode. Um, from off, if you press and hold the switch, it will go, or, or I'm sorry, if you just press the switch from off, it'll go to whatever power level you had it in last, um, except for moonlight mode. Uh, from any level, you can press and hold the switch to cycle through low, medium, high, and turbo, and that's about where the normal operation ends. The rest of this is when we start getting into its quirks. Um, based on the orientation of the light, uh, but again, the UI is still relatively intuitive, even when you have it uh, at 90 degrees versus straight up and down. Um, if you switch from the standard orientation to the 90 degree uh, uh, light orientation, it will switch the output automatically from the SFT40 to the CSP 1919s, which makes sense to me because I'm guessing you're not trying to spotlight something if you're in a 90 degree mode. Maybe you are though. I don't really know. Um, however, with the light on, you could double tap the switch at any given point in time and it'll change which LED is illuminated. Um, if you're in standard orientation, it'll go from spot to flood to both. Uh, but if you're in the 90 degree orientation, it'll go from flood to both to spot. So it follows the same path, but uh, just different starting points. Uh, from off, you could also double tap to get into turbo. And finally, the last little bit of uh, difference is if you triple tap the switch at any time, it'll switch it to its red LEDs. And while the red LEDs are on, you could hold the side switch and it'll switch it into beacon mode instead of the solid red light. Okay, that was a mouthful. But now it's time for our ultimate question. Would I buy this flashlight again? And I'd have to say yes, especially if you're new to the more powerful flashlights. Granted, it's not a high CRI output, so if that ends up being one of your major uh, deal breakers for a flashlight, this may not necessarily be the model for you, though I do know they do offer some other models that are high CRI uh, LED emitters. Um, this one's great for someone who's uh, an entry into this space. Uh, it offers a tons of features, uh, majorly being the ability to switch from a standard flashlight to a 90 degree flashlight. Uh, and then it also includes a spot, a flood, and red LEDs, excuse me, red LEDs all in one package. So it does a lot with 
you know, one flashlight. Um, those abilities paired with its strong pocket clip and equally strong magnetic tail cap give the HD11 a multitude of different use cases uh, with accompanying output levels and mode for whatever you're using it for. Flashlight would be great for anything from, you know, late night emergency repairs on the side of the road, camping, uh, to something simple like taking the dog for a walk at night, right? It's a, a definitely an all-in-one kind of utility flashlight. Other than that, thanks for watching. Carry on.